sort of what we're looking at, and that's going to be in the next version. So you're time-based. Everything here is time-based in the group. So you can, I mean, I have guys who, I have a guy who has 15 time-based groups, I don't know how to take that. <laughs> And he accesses everything from flat very also. So if you're out of his office for a certain day or you're moving for a certain day, like day, he could set how he's called around that everything is accessible from the mobile. So this makes it interesting for hosted action. I've actually a few guys who have approached us where they want to put Zimbra, as I mentioned in New York shop, Zimbra, Drew, Blackberry. And now, especially in New York, everyone is in New York area, everyone is like walking around with Blackberry. So they can have their own PID of this and change how they're yeah, and all these and all these videos are available on our YouTube channel. So if uh, we, I think we have some more videos too. So Yeah. And uh, Vikram briefly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Vikram briefly mentioned this, and what we're planning to do is uh, we're planning to actually write a connector to the BlackBerry Enterprise server that basically handles uh, more integration, sort of into the native BlackBerry framework. So the native mail, uh, native mail application, and all those things. So that is, uh, you know, definitely something we would look at and. and Definitely, as you mentioned with OCS, I'll probably look at that too. Actually, I'm curious, because you know, you want to look at that. And yeah, I did. Yeah. 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 Y
and uh, we'll have an LDAP synchronization between regular sites. So this allows you to sort of manage centrally um, your configuration for all your sites. Uh, the branch office stuff will be a little bit more, a uh, little bit different, and it'll probably be something that we'll explore a little bit more as we go ahead. Um, so, any questions on multi-site? I'm not quite understanding. What is the purpose? Why would you want a branch site as opposed to a separate site that you're synchronizing to the LDAP database? Uh, a possibility with a branch site is to have a solution like Pika. So, these are smaller boxes. They probably can't handle an LDAP server inside them. That would be the purpose? Yeah. Okay. So, they might handle sort of a little bit more as we go ahead. Just... I'm just gonna sacrifice some power here. Okay. So, so that's sort of the main reason. Any other questions? Why don't you talk about a little bit on the site two? Did you show? Okay. So site two is just like a normal is like your main site. It's just running Sire. It's just running your standard IMAP asterisk Jeopardy post uh, open out that Postgres. And it's just that what happens is is that you can actually replicate it can actually replicate its information in LDAP. And what you can do is LDAP is hierarchical. So what we do is, is that in, within the hierarchy, the individual configurations of the site are all stored in the LDAP. And they're replicated among all of them. So what happens is, is say one site just completely goes down, I can restore that site by simply pulling its configuration from the main site uh, back down. So that's sort of the advantage. Uh, this won't have sort of the full synchronization of the voicemail and stuff like that. So if you want that to be redundant, you should do that within the site. So uh, stuff like that. What so, does that mean? So, so within the site is something like this. The single site redundancy here with the hot standby where you would have this set up inside a site, you know, inside your, your main site or maybe one of your branch sites that's a big site. Maybe you have like say 70, 80 people as, and you might have like say 200 people in your main site. So this is big enough to the point where this box won't help you, but it's, uh, but it's still smaller than your main site and you can make that redundant in addition to making your other site redundant. So you can have, you know, you can have a sort of a, just different sites here and there. Any other questions? So there's other future directions we're going in. Um, one of the things we're trying to do is we're going to do more fixed mobile convergence. Uh, you've seen the BlackBerry applications. Uh, we've also talked about mobile bridging as well. We're really going to start going a lot further. I mean, we want to actually have uh, mobile uh, devices that you can basically move calls between and in and out of them. We also want to start taking advantage of certain dual mode phones, the ability to sort of move a call from, uh, move a call from say, your Wi-Fi to GSM or GSM to Wi-Fi, uh, situations like that. Uh, instantaneous conferencing, so from the BlackBerry application, I can set up an immediate conference with people in my BlackBerry address book, so things like that. Um, we're going to provide more call reporting queue options. This is just basically to improve what we've already started on, and uh, so we, I've showed you the graphs and things like that. We'll probably uh, improve those, refine those metrics a bit. Um, and as we've sort of talked about uh, briefly, uh, we want to integrate with more enterprise components. So definitely Microsoft uh, uh, OCS uh, integration is something that we're definitely looking at in a very strong way. And uh, we also want to make more advanced use of presence information. So we'll probably start supporting more of a rich presence engine at some point and uh, probably also take advantage of presence and use it to do routing of calls and sort of other presence uh, options as well. And I went through these videos earlier, and uh, so I'll open the floor. Uh, it's not quite so seamless. It's a major upgrade. It's a major upgrade. Now, we are working on it, uh, because we actually have to upgrade our own PBX from version 4 to 5, so. 4 5 is actually a new 